Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Data Cloud Now. I'm currently in New York City at Advertising Week, where I'm delighted to be joined by Nick Winfrey, Director of Data Science and Strategy at Disney. Thank you. Nick, looking forward to this conversation. Same. The mission of the Walt Disney Company is to entertain, inform, and inspire people around the globe through the power of unparalleled storytelling, reflecting the iconic brands, creative minds, and innovative technologies. How does Disney leverage data to support your commitment to world-class storytelling through Disney Plus with ads? Yeah, storytelling is central to any data team success. It's, it's how you stay relevant. At the end of the day, you've got to be able to take those insights. You've got to be able to relate to your audience and you've got to drive decisions with it. And so for us within Disney advertising, the center of our story is our audience graph. It's how we take all those sub stories that are out there, all those different content points that you can engage with, whether on Disney+, Plus, ESPN, Hulu, pick the content engagement point. It's how we unify all of those web of connections into one central story. Um, and then from there, with storytelling, it's how do we make that relatable? How do we take that hub and spoke approach that we've built out and how do we make it relatable to our brands that are running on our content, who are running ads and trying to relate to those audiences. And so for us, it's really how do we build that journey of a user through the flow, through the content engagement and get it to the doorstep for a brand so they can then pick up that story and reach out to those audiences in a way that's meaningful. And that can be taking someone, you know, we have a concept of Follow the fan. Follow the fan is the idea that you're not just a fan NHL starts today. You're not just a fan when the NHL game is on. You're a fan every single day, even when the content stops. So how do we understand why you're a fan? What's driving you to it? Is it that loyalty, that brand loyalty to the team that you've had since you were a little kid into your adulthood? And that same brand loyalty is going to resonate with the brands that are running on our site. And so it's really taking that story from the very beginning, getting it to the doorstep for our advertisers and letting them pick it up and carry it then on with their messaging. I love that, Nick. Thank you for that background and insights. The data cloud is becoming increasingly important in the advertising industry. How is it powering your team to drive meaningful outcomes on a daily basis? Yeah, the industry loves their buzzwords. So you had AI first. Sorry or you had AI now, then machine learning before that, you had big data. At the end of the day, for us, it's, it's a focus on our consumers and our brands and driving innovative solutions. But what AI is allowing us to do is to do that in a scalable, repeatable way and really at a much faster pace than we've ever been able to before. And so it's not just about time and cost being reduced, it's also about accessibility. AI now is everywhere. Everywhere we look around at Adweek, everywhere we look around in our personal life, we're hearing about it, we're being exposed to it, the applications are becoming common day. And so when we're trying to build a pitch internally of a new AI application within our use cases, there's already now a digestibility. There's already an understanding and a relatability to it. And so from just an adoption perspective, we're having a lot easier time. Uh, pointing to kind of two core areas that we think about AI right now as it relates to the cloud. First is what we call Disney Select AI Engine. It's, as I was hitting before, all those different content points that are out there is really trying to get at how do we make sense of those? So I said, follow the fan. You could cut that data into 200,000 different fanships. How do we make them meaningful? And so, and how do we then optimize as taste evolve over time? AI has allowed us to build thousands of different models, deploy them, follow the trends over time, and really understand the life cycle of our user engaging with our platform. Great to hear, Nick. And as a Disney Plus customer myself, I want to say thank you, big fan, especially with your bundle with ESPN Plus. I'd love to take a step back for a moment and take a macro view of the film and entertainment industries and the role advertising plays within the two. Thinking about the ever-evolving impact of AI, as you just mentioned, how are you incorporating this technology for brands and ultimately enhance the customer experience? Yeah, we, we, we use a catchphrase right audience, right message, right time. So when we think about enhancing the experience for our consumers and for our brands, we're really thinking about those being our core driving principles. And so when you think about right audience, continuing to evolve that theme that I'm talking about kind of with those, those personas and the different ways that, that people engage, we're, we're trying to get at why. It's not just what are they watching, but why are they watching it? Why are they coming back? Why are they choosing to engage with it? 
uh, consumers are going to vote with their eyeballs. What they're choosing to watch is, is going to matter. And if we can understand the right audience for us, how do we start to understand the right audience for our advertisers? Um, and then for right message, we had a product that we announced that I was super excited about in January. Everything gets branded. It's called Magic Words. The concept there is using AI to read the scene before an ad break. So we've all had that moment where you're, you're watching a piece of content, you're listening to something, and you go from that core content into that ad break and it's jarring. Completely uh, separated from yeah. what, yeah. The noise has changed, the sound, the, the, the sound quality has changed, the color has changed, the mood has changed. You're in this dark thing and all of a sudden you're now in this happy scene and you're like, I don't know what just happened. It's not a great experience for consumers, it's not a great experience for brands. So with AI, what we've started to do is really run through kind of frame by frame the break before the, uh, the scenes before the ad break and start to classify them. Start to classify what is the hero in that scene? What is central to that scene? Is it the car? Is it sitting at a restaurant? Is it sitting at a table? And from there, trying to understand what are the emotions and sentiments that, that those scenes drive. With that, then using some of the AI that we have in our ad server around optimization to allow for the right creative then to run so that you eventually start to have the creative, the ad break, feel more natural with the content, feel like it flows through. Consistency across. Yeah, and it's just a better experience. It's a better experience for us because it doesn't feel like you're just being slammed with kind of abrasive messaging. It's a great experience for our brands because they're able to harness the premium content that we have on Disney. They're able to really piggyback. They get that kind of halo effect. Um, and then it's a great experience for the, the consumer. It, it, it lands well over time. And so we think of kind of as hyper contextualization and we think it's the way that contextual messaging is going to go instead of genre it's going to be really the ai powered scene before um, and then in the final area around kind of the right time or the right message going back with consumers vote with their eye or with their with their eyes and with their pocketbook the idea that let them choose the ad format. Let them choose what they want to engage with. And, and so really trying to drive ad innovation, trying to drive ad experiences, whether well, that's binge ads, pause ads, how do you do gamification of ads? There's a lot here at Ad Week around shopping within the ads. And so letting the consumer choose that ad experience that they feel like is most natural for them. Uh, those are kind of the three core areas that we think about with the AI innovation driving experiences for consumers and brands. Exciting stuff. Stuff, Nick, and tying it back to the overall Disney experience, we've seen Disney partner with companies like Google in the trade desk to simplify inventory access. How is your team using data and automation to enhance these partnerships and improve the advertising ecosystem as a whole? Yeah, we had a, a core goal that we put out of 50% automation of our business by 2025. We exceeded that. We've revised the goal to 75% of our business being automated by 2027. But I think it always is worth stepping back and saying, why are we automating? What is the end goal of those metrics? What do we feel like those metrics are going to drive for our business? And so when we think of it, we think of both pace the market, removing barriers to, to entry, and then freeing up time for, for further innovation. And so when we're looking at those partnerships that, that you alluded to, we're looking at the opportunity through automation to bring more brands to our platform. Remove those barriers, make it easier for them to advertise for us so that it's not just the big brands, the small brands, national, local, all of them have an entry point into it. And through those partnerships and the ones that we'll continue to, to seek out, we're looking for that breadth of advertiser, that breadth of experience that can run on our, our platform, just as if we want the breadth of content so that we have what everyone is interested in. And it also, it allows for innovation where, where you're pulling processes off of manual, you're giving people that headspace to step back for a data team as we talked at the top to remember that you're a, a storyteller and that your end goal is to build this succinct narrative for a technology company, same thing. Like you want to have that time for innovation. You want to have that time for new ideas, not just trying to kind of repeat the same old ones. I love that. Thank you, Nick. Before we go, what's next for Disney advertising? Yeah, we have 
every year at the beginning of the year, you know, kind of our, our first intro into data and tech, it's where we roll out a lot of our new capabilities. Um, not going too far into it, but maybe giving a little bit of a, of a tease. Yeah. So we'll pick up off of, of Magic Words, for example, that's in streaming and entertainment right now. How do we do the same thing in live sports? Really pushes the AI application to its max because you're having to understand the scene or what's going on in the game, the unpredictable nature of sports, and you're having to figure out what, how to harness that in a way then that the messaging feels consistent with that emotion that sports really can drive. Beyond that, um, you know, we're really, we've done a lot of work with Snowflake on the clean room space. We're really looking at what is the next phase of innovation there. How do we take that storytelling and make it more of a self-service concept for our brands where they can get those insights, where they can come to our platform. They can start building that same story because at the end of the day, a marketer has got to go answer to a CMO or a CFO and has to also explain why they are choosing to advertise on our platform. And so we really want to push the boundaries of what insights storytelling means within the advertising space. And then the ad tier has expanded from the US to additional markets now in EMEA and Latin America. How do we take the same capabilities that we've been building out? How do we replicate those from the US to these markets? And, and what new ones do we need to bring that will resonate with those particular markets? So when I look at kind of those three buckets, Magic words moving into sports, trying to push the boundaries of, of data collaboration and then expanding to, to global. Those are kind of the three pillars that I'm looking for in the year ahead. Well, I'm excited to see what comes next. Thank you so much, Nick. Thank you. And for the audience watching, I'm Ryan Green with Data Cloud Now. We'll see you soon.